There are multiple amusement parks on the Jersey Shore, but only one is in the town where Jersey Shore was filmed, and that would be none other than Casino Pier. Located in Seaside Heights, this park was devastated by Superstorm Sandy back in 2012, but it has been rebuilt better than ever. New flat rides were added, and the park received a new signature coaster in Hydrus. So in this video, I will rank this park's top 15 rides and attractions. Before starting the countdown, two things to note. One, I will be including some of the upcharge attractions I have experienced over the years at this park. Two, this list will only include rides at the dry park. Casino Pier owns a nearby water park in Breakwater Beach, but since I've not been there, I cannot rank any of those attractions. Number 15, Wave Swinger. This Bertazon swing ride offers a nice breeze as you fly in a circle while bobbing up and down. I just can't put it higher because the park has far better spinning rides available. Number 14, Tilt-A-Whirl. This classic flat ride spends a lot of the time aimlessly rocking back and forth. But if you throw your weight into it, you'll get some full rotations blasting you with nice forces. Number 13, Crazy Cabs. This compact SPF Visa spinning ride feels like a Tilt-A-Whirl, just with more rotations. You get some good whips when your vehicle spins a full 360 degrees, and the ride stops midway through in reverses direction, so you have plenty of opportunities to come off dizzy. Number 12, Pirate's Hideaway. This wisdom roller coaster is objectively a dumpster fire. You have an eye-catching facade, and most of the layout takes place indoors, so you'd think there'd be theming, but nope. The enclosed portion is just a big empty warehouse with nothing to see. To make matters worse, the coaster bit is a janky junior coaster. The indoor portion is slow and awkward, especially when the brakes slam you to a hard stop. The outdoor part is better with the weird spiral lift hill and zippy initial drops at least. See my review for more, but this ride's a mess. However, it's so bad that I can bring a smile to my face, and I don't come off in pain because I know where to brace myself on the brakes. Number 11, Disco. This Samperla flat ride combines spinning and pendulum motions into one ride. The gondola rotates at a good clip to get you dizzy. Then the rocking induces some faint weightlessness on the spikes, while also offering nice sight lines over the beach. Number 10, Music Express. This bird is on Himalaya is all about the laterals. It rotates quite quickly, plastering you to the side of the car for the duration of the ride, and the ride's theatric too with the loud music and lighting at night. Number 9, Zolo Loca. This SPF Big Air Coaster offers two different ride experiences in one. You can either ride in a spinning car or a hamster wheel. This ranking will reflect the latter. The layout forms an oval around the park's kitty coaster. Whenever you hit that bunny hill, you get a forced flip that lifts you out of your seat. This was the one flip I'd get each lap consistently. I love this part. However, the turns are not the most comfortable. You have a big over-the-shoulder restraint. They are padded, but some head banging is inevitable. And you get three laps with each ride, so you'll flip at least three times and maybe stall upside down a bit too. Up next would have been the air race. This Samperla flat ride was recently removed, which is a shame because it was a good inverting flat. It only offered a pinch of positive G's, but the repeated inversions were dizzying while offering some hang time. Number 8, Ferris Wheel. This is a colossal 13-story tall observation wheel from Technical Park. You get a sweet bird's eye view of both the park and town as you slowly rotate about. Number 7, Sky Ride. This observation ride is technically outside the park's boundaries, hence why it's an upcharge. This attraction runs along the boardwalk, so you get a much better view in the Ferris wheel in my opinion. You get a great tour of Seaside Heights, seeing all the shops, along with the beach off to the side. Number 6, Shore Shot. This is a 12-story tall SNS drop tower. This one is technically a double shot, but it might as well be a quadruple shot because every ride offers a double cycle. A few of the drop towers on the Jersey Shore do this. The launches are weak, but there is good air time at the top. You get decent ejector on the first launch, and an okay pop on the second. And you of course get a brief but grand view of the area from the top. Number 5, Centrifuge. This is an indoor scrambler, and a good one too. By taking an ordinary flat and placing it indoors, the experience becomes extraordinary. This happens with a lot of flat rides, 
but the Northeast in particular is known for doing this with scramblers. You get the usual laterals as you spin about, but the rise extra disorienting with the flashing lights and booming music. It feels like a dance club in there, and the near misses are sublime with that atmosphere. Number 4. The Sky Coaster This is one of the shorter Sky Coasters out there, standing just 10 stories tall. But it compensates with its placement. It swings you towards the water, creating some fantastic views. Then you have the always suspenseful plunge. It is so thrilling pulling your own ripcord. You only get an instant of freefall on this one though due to the lack of height, as you quickly start the swing outwards. It is an upcharge, but it's an absolute rush. Number 3. Superstorm This technical park frisbee is a tour de force. It offers a bit of everything. The initial swings give weak floater. The beyond vertical swings have copious sustained lifter air time. Then the full revolutions offer excellent hang time, particularly in the stalls and the slower flips. Then the down swings contrast those negative Gs with brief but strong positive Gs. Other frisbees have longer cycles, but few of them offer a more diverse ride experience. Number 2. Hydrus This Gerslauer Eurofighter is a short but sweet ride. This is one of two 320 models out there. This one starts off with a 7-story beyond vertical drop. You get a stunning view of the beach, followed by the intense plunge. You get powerful ejector airtime. The pullout has nice Gs, and then you have three inversions. The vertical loop is a pinch of hang time at the top. The cutback is just okay, but the final barrel roll has phenomenal hang time. That's especially true because you have lap bars instead of over-the-shoulder harnesses. This also makes the experience far smoother and more comfortable too. See my review for more, but this is one of the better seaside coasters out there. And coming in, number one is Skyscraper. This is yet another ride not included with wristbands. It's understandable because of the capacity, and I think it's well worth the cost. Boosters are always intense, but this one is especially great. To start, the location by the water is amazing. You get stunning views looking towards the Atlantic Ocean. Second, the ride itself is wilder. This is a Gravity Works creation, and this version feels more unhinged as it rotates faster, and the gondola abruptly rocks on the downswings. Then you get these wonderful flips over the top. And this one is an extremely long cycle for this type of ride, going both directions for a good amount of time. So those are the top 15 rides at Casino Pier. What are your favorite rides here? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.